Two Rivers Talks is brought to you by Two Rivers Biz Starts. Also by Two Rivers Main Street. And by Raleigh Point Economic Advising. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Two Rivers Talks. Uh, I'm Todd Nielsen, uh, your co-host, and this is my co-host, Darla LeClaire. Uh, we are really excited to be here uh, at the State Capitol uh, in Wisconsin in the, the conference center, uh, Con the, conference governor's room, conference the governor's room. conference room. And um, in just a, a few minutes, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, Governor Tony Evers, as well as the uh, secretary and CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, uh, Missy Hughes. Right. And uh, it's gonna be a great interview and we are really looking forward to seeing them and talking about the arts and about innovation and entrepreneurship, especially as it relates to our little corner of the world in right. Two Rivers. Uh, so stay tuned for that, um, lots of great stuff. Um, we'll also have our usual mix of uh, fun things about news about Two Rivers, uh, things that are going on and, uh, and the Main Street Minutes, I'm sure we'll, we'll get fit into, into there somehow. So, or maybe we won't this week. Let's just actually, this, uh, this, <laughs> actually, this is going to be a standalone. Oh, this is just going to be a standalone episode. Yes. Bonus. There we go. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> but following on the foot, foot heels, the foot heels, the foot hills, the hills? <laughs> over the hills. Following, the on, following on the heels of this show. <laughs> We are a professional I'm, a video podcast. I mean, yes. look where we're at. Um, we will have we'll we'll be back into our, our our typical rhythm of you know engaging conversation. We're in a slightly less Game of Thrones setting here. Yeah, <laughs> we've got the, the major hearth behind us here. <laughs> and just so you know, today is um, it's January the sixth. The weather is gorgeous, and if you can't already tell, we're super excited about this. Um, this is huge, not only for Two Rivers Talks, but also to spotlight um, the city of Two Rivers. And we're very proud of our city and we like to promote it. And uh, I'm just so stoked right now. I am too, okay. I am too. Yeah, so, uh, so that being said, stick with us. We'll be right back and we'll have the governor and Missy Hughes from WEDC with us. Chill. I can't. I can't. <laughs> we'll be right back. Uh, hello, everybody. We are extremely excited to be here in the Governor's Conference Room uh, with Governor Tony Evers and uh, the Secretary and CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, Missy Hughes. Welcome to Two Rivers Talks, both oh, of you. Thanks. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. We're really excited to have you on today. Um, Darla and I uh, started the Two Rivers Talks uh, video podcast a little bit over a year ago to talk about um, Two Rivers is a great place to live and work and build a business and you know come and visit and, and stay and you know buy a house and all those great things right. and um, and as part of that we've gotten to talk to some really exciting people you guys are top of the list uh, we're, we're really honored to have you here and um, and of course we want to talk a little bit today about uh, the arts because uh, Darla uh, runs the uh, the Basil Ishkabibbles uh, art gallery uh, right down on Main Street uh, where we shoot most of our, our shows, uh, and, uh, and I'm very involved with uh, business startups and entrepreneurship, uh, both in Two Rivers as well as with the New North and some of the things happening in Northeastern Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So we're both uh, excited to talk about these topics with you today, and, um, and I guess uh, we're, we're interested maybe in starting out talking a little bit about um, economic development mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of the efforts uh, that you've been uh, talking about to improve infrastructure um, to make economic development happen across the state. Yeah. And I was just kind of wondering what kinds of uh, efforts you've been making and, and what kind of progress you've seen so far. Yeah, well, we can, I want to talk in two, two ways. One, one is about, as you talked about wanting to bring people to, uh, to rivers, uh, I have the same goal around the state of Wisconsin. And we, we have to become a more welcoming uh, place and place where young people want to stay and frankly, young people want to move to. Uh, but one of those things that uh, comes out of that conversation is the fact that uh, uh, we have to have a good quality of life in the state, and infrastructure and transportation and issues is part of that. 
And uh, so the, the good news is that uh, uh, one of the things I ran for office on was around the issue of transportation and infrastructure and, and uh, worked with the legislature and less budget. And we made some huge headways on that, uh, that we were able to not only fix pot potholes, but making sure that uh, people have a way to get from point A to point B in a, in a much better way. And so the legislature and, and I came to that conclusion together and we had a re pretty robust uh, um, budget around, around that issue. So that piece is in place, but uh, I think we're in the same, same um, vein that when it comes to quality of life, if we want, if we want our economic uh, status to continue to grow in a positive way, Yes, we have to look at ways, and Missy can certainly go into the detail around economic development, but we also have to be concerned about other issues around quality of life. Uh, that is really important uh, for people to, to make sure that they understand what a great quality of life that we have in the state. So an example of that might be something like uh, education or opportunities for re-educating the workforce. Right. Um, I'm, I'm involved with a group uh, called Advancing AI Wisconsin, which is right. about sort of, you know, the, the technologies uh, that are disrupting and, and changing the way that business happens. Um, what kinds of efforts are happening or, or, or conversations have, have, I guess maybe I'll ask you this, Missy, uh, around, uh, around uh, partnerships with educational institutions and maybe uh, re-education kinds of initiatives that are going on? Sure, I really appreciate that question. Um, as I've gone around the state and traveled around the state, workforce is a huge conversation and the declining and aging population of Wisconsin is a huge population. Many small communities like yours are facing that and so there's there's so many different things happen sometimes it makes me a little anxious that there's too many things <laughs> happening um, but what I'm seeing is a real effort to make sure that the workers who are currently in the workforce are having an opportunity to have training and, and I've heard a lot about the technical colleges and the work that they're doing to make sure that the training is available and flexible for workers. So if you're on a shift from eight to five, you can't go to classes during that time. And going home and doing it, you know, leaving the home and going home and doing it isn't always an easy option. So what are the ways that workers can access the, the technical colleges, which is an amazing system that we have in Wisconsin, and be able to have those um, educational opportunities, I think is something that people are really digging into. And then in turn, the businesses that I've spoken with are trying to be really flexible to make sure that their workers have those opportunities. Um, you also mentioned re-education. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a, a robust conversation starting to happen about criminal justice reform, about how do we reintegrate adults who have been in custody back into the workforce. I think we have a real opportunity to, um, to move the dial on that conversation in a really innovative and exciting way. And I think the, the one other piece that I'd tag on to what the governor was saying is childcare is a huge issue mm -hmm. and for getting back into the workforce. So making sure that we have um, good, solid childcare for people to access for their children so when they go to work, they know that their kids are well taken care of and are you know, having a, a wholesome experience. Yeah, and Missy mentioned childcare, that brought to mind uh, the, the issue that is absolutely true, if you want people to be part of the workforce, somehow we need to address that issue. I know in Ashland, Wisconsin, which is probably a city similar to, to Rivers, is that we, the state that has helped them create a, a good uh, opportunity for early childhood there. And not only does that create jobs for the people that work there in the early childhood uh, group, but it also allows more people to be available to work also. You know, another thing that I'm thinking of too is that there are several states right now that are losing population. Mm -hmm. People are moving away. What about trying to recruit from areas? You know, it's just as easy to move to Wisconsin as it is to one of the Dakotas. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just come a couple more miles, right. you know? Right. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. 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 That, it's interesting you brought it up. A lot of people talk to me about the impact of the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. From me, my vantage point, sir, I'm, I'm, ha I'm very happy that we're going to have that there. But we also have a freebie here. We have a freebie. We, we have the opportunity to tell the nation what a great place Wisconsin is. Not just Milwaukee, Amen. southeast yeah. Wisconsin, <laughs> but the entire state. And uh, what a great place it is to live, work, someplace that, that values diversity. Okay. All those things. That to me is the 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 golden uh, 
piece of uh, having a democratic convention. I never thought of that. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's a perfect yeah. opportunity. It is. A, I mean, yeah. if think about the the, we're, the window to the world that we're going to have sure. next summer. And it isn't, as I said before, not just about Milwaukee, it's about the entire state of Wisconsin and what a great place it is. So to me, it's a freebie. We have to take advantage of it. Well done. Yes, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and Darla, it's interesting. So I moved here from Colorado. Okay. And you moved, you mentioned before the show started, um, from Los Angeles. Right. So we have the experience of coming to Wisconsin and understanding what it is to move here for, for meaningful work right. and to raise our families. And I think that's a story that we need to keep telling. And, and WEDC has a marketing program where we are reaching out to contiguous states and, and Mentioning, okay. hey, you might want to think about Wisconsin. And we love those guys. It's yeah. great, but we want them to come here. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that far. <laughs> that transplant too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. grew so, up in Pennsylvania. Yeah. and uh, ended up here. I uh, met my wife. Uh, we were going to school down in Kentucky. So uh, yeah, we, we fell in love. Uh, well, I fell in love. To say she already lived here. and Loved it, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think about. I think that the statistics that I've heard are seventy percent of the Wisconsin population were born here which means 30% have moved here. So it's not that crazy an idea, although I think there are times when the three of us probably feel a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but you know, with the art gallery, I got a lot of people who come in. Summer's the best time, obviously. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are moving to Two Rivers. Two Rivers has become the new up north. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so that, that line, that delineation line has moved down a little bit. But we are getting an influx of people from like Illinois and other states sure. too. So um, the, the arts are important to people. I, we, I, I, we, uh, my wife Kathy and I have understood that in a real, uh, real solid way. In that we live in the ex executive residence, and we made it a priority to bring art from Wisconsin artists mm -hmm. to be shown at the executive residence, and it yes. is just it's just mushroomed. I mean, we we can hardly keep up with it, frankly. But uh, the arts uh, and uh, Wisconsin, I think, are, it's just a perfect opportunity for us to not only uh, increase tourism and all that, but having an art community that, uh, uh, that is vibrant will impact positively our economic development. And it goes back to the initial thing I talked about is quality of life. Quality of life is really important. You know, do we, do we need manufacturing jobs? Yes. Do we need to have, you know, great economic development? Yes, but unless we have things like affordable housing in place and right. making sure that we have good health care and so on and so forth, it makes it more difficult. Right. And I did want to say thank you for returning Wishes in the Wind oh, yeah. back, to, back to your house. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, that, that piece of art uh, by David Lenz, uh, uh, is a great piece, please, uh, piece, and we have actually got another one of his. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah we, we've, it's, it's been a really eye-opening uh, adventure for both of us. Are see. you uh, running out of wall space? Yes. Okay, <laughs> good, <laughs> yes. I'm glad to hear yes. it. Yes. But we're going to continue to cycle things through. And, uh, sure. Uh, but it, it is a major part of our DNA here in Wisconsin, and unless we uh, continue to advocate for that, um, we will be making a mistake. You know, I just want to throw out a couple of statistics here. Um, well, first of all, the previous administration cut the funding for the Wisconsin Arts Board by 67%. Mm -hmm. And right now we are, we're ranked 48th. Right. You know, and I'm just curious as to what can we do to restore the levels to like yeah, well, we, but the budget, uh, my budget actually increased, it was to increase it dramatically, and that didn't seem to sit well with the Republicans. I, I just think it is important for us to continue to talk about the arts in terms of not only intrinsic things uh, for individual Wisconsinites, but how it does impact uh, uh, economic development. And I think we can do a better job of that and, and, and explaining that, because I, who can be against art? In the arts, <laughs> frankly, and I, I think if we make an effort to explain it better, I think that's really important. And I know at w, uh, WEDC also, uh, you know, participates in making sure that people understand that. But uh, we have to get to we have to get some other legislators involved because it really is going to bring in a lot of revenue. And it, yeah. you know, you talk about quality of life, and uh, I I did a, a, an article on. Um, uh, homelessness mm -hmm. and people who are impacted in other countries through uh, 
you know, through war, who don't have that opportunity to have the, the capability of being artsy right. and being right. creative right. or being able to learn from it or enjoy it. Right. And um, it's, it's very telling. We all need that. And well, right. you're an educator right. and you know how it's been for the last couple of decades that they're going to cut anything out of schools. Right. It's going to be music and art and theater and, yeah. you know, it's, no, and it's very important. You no, know. We, we, we need to keep investing in it because the long term it will make uh, our economy even stronger. I think it makes people better. Yeah. You know. I visited a, a, a project that we supported in Portage called Create Portage. And what they've done, they started out as, as an arts-based organization, and they've expanded to include entrepreneurship and innovation. So you really see that idea of creativity in the arts, then you feel like, oh, maybe I can be creative with a business idea, and maybe I can bring other people in to join me on that idea or do something innovative. So I think it, it's, it's critical for economic development to have that, that spur of creativity. And I think starting that in the schools where you have education opportunities, um, we fund fab labs, which you know kids can come in and do hands-on work mm -hmm. and learn that. That's important for manufacturing, but again, for, for innovation and for that spark of entrepreneurship, yeah. which is so important in Wisconsin, if you think of, you know, I'm, yeah. My, the farmers are at my heart. The farmers are entrepreneurs and innovators every day. And so right. it's, it's really part of our DNA to have that creative spark. Well, <laughs> what I love about our conversation so far is that uh, you know, you're, you're talking about sort of innovation and the arts and sort of the, the interrelationship between these two things. Um, Darla and I, when we came in and we set up here you know, earlier today, we, you know, we realized this, these, these aren't really just convenient talk, talking points right now for this point in history. This is something that the state is really founded on. There's, there's a, an image at the, in the, in the yeah. top of this room that's a, a lady with a, a tablet, and, and two of the things on there um, are the arts and, in, and invention. Right. I mean, yeah. just incredibly yeah. important yeah. things that are tenets for, that the state was built upon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, and it goes back to, uh, Missy mentioned, the K through 12 connections is obviously very important here, and so having strong schools, and I know Two Rivers has a good, great school district, and the neighboring, Areas are, are real strong, and the connection with Lakeshore Technical College, and it's just got recognized for for excellence as yeah, well. Yeah, right. yeah. absolutely. We're it's very fortunate to have them okay. in our area. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess the, on uh, entrepreneurship, and start just to get back to that for a second. Um, one of the things that uh, that I've run into uh, working with the new New North has been uh, that question of the, the density of startups. Um, in the state is kind of lagging behind you know, some, some other states in the area. What kinds of efforts are being made, you know, I guess with WEDC and, and yeah. you know, the things that are on your agenda to really um, foster not just technical entrepreneurship, because I think that's important and you know, sort of those gazelle startups are wonderful and they bring in a lot of revenue and they're very visible, um, but I think we also care about Main Street businesses and, and encouraging those kinds of startups as well. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just start, start off with 30,000 30, foot yeah. piece. When I ran for governor, you know, there's obviously a uh, discussion about WEDC and how it functions and uh, whether they were actively involved in Main Street, Wisconsin or not, probably doesn't matter all that much. It, 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 what the, the issue is, are they? You know, it, because I think what happens uh, with WEDC, we, you know, it was so engaged in Southeast Wisconsin, and, and frankly, the the message people got, whether that was true or not, the message people got was that it's not a 72 county uh, affair, and that's why I'm so happy Missy became uh, agreed to be the leader of that group, uh, because I, I think it has a lot, you know, it has worked in, in Main Street, Wisconsin. Uh, for years, but we need to amp that up. And I know we created a, a committee uh, of the, the, the council itself, the group of people that advise us uh, around entrepreneurship. So I, I think we have to not only do some really important things, but we have to message it differently that uh, we do care about the two rivers of the world and the Ashlands of the world and the portages of the world. Um, just before Christmas, I had a chance, uh, so I live in Viroqua down in Southwest Wisconsin, and I had the chance to visit three businesses that have started up in the last three or four years. Two of them are women, women owned, one of them is um, family owned. And so there is startup activity happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, is it, is it the, um, 
gazelle. I think I, I've heard the term unicorn. You know, is it the is it the you know thing that goes crazy kind of and goes is, public yeah. and IPO, or is it mammal? Right. <laughs> Are they businesses that contribute to the quality of life that the governor was speaking about and to right. Main Street communities? So I, you know, there's room for all of it. Um, I've been impressed with the entrepreneur and startup innovation conversation that's been happening around the state. Green Bay, you mentioned New North, has um, a, a couple different incubators that are very exciting. Madison was just named by the Brookings Institution as the Midwest hub of startups where there is a, a density that's exciting. I think there's, there's always more room to be done. A challenge is making sure that those startups have the right amount of capital, and that's right. something that the governor has asked WEDC to look into, and we've already started that conversation to see how do we get more investment in Wisconsin companies. Well, I think that's something uh, in, in, in our city, you know, Two Rivers, um, that we're trying to do things to get more visibility. I think we, we participated for the first time this year in the Start Wisconsin Week mm -hmm. uh, events uh, that uh, Matt Cordy is involved with. Um, and uh, and then we've, we've also had two, and we're going to have another um, light up the lake short business idea competition. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do things, you know, to promote innovation in our little corner of, uh, of Wisconsin as well. And that's kind of the tricky thing, because I think as much as we're able to do that, um, raising capital or connecting those great ideas that are coming from high school students or college students or adults with that capital has been a real challenge for us, you know, we've seen. Well, one thing that we're doing, I'm on the Main Street Board of Directors mm -hmm. for Two Rivers. And one of the things that we're doing, we have a thing called a sign and facade grant program. And it wasn't really being taken advantage of, so that the monies that were sitting there are just kind of languishing. And we've talked to several people who would like to do a, have a startup business, but it's like, oh gosh, how am I going to pay for my inventory? How am I going to pay my rent, you know, until I start having money sure. flowing in? And one thing that we've decided to do is to take a portion of that sign and facade grant money and make it available to people um, who have a viable business plan. I mean, there's steps that they, things that they have to, um, you know, criteria they have to meet. But to give them, it's not like rent forgiveness, you know, it's mm. not a, a social um, program. It is, you donate your time and you volunteer for Main Street and we can give you, you know, a certain percentage mm -hmm. um, that'll help you either grow your inventory or keep your lights on, yeah. you know, for yeah. a year. So on, on a super, I mean, just minuscule scale, but we just figured that it was something that we could do to maybe help people. Because right now, um, we don't have as many dark storefronts as we did. We, we have turned the corner, Good. but some people have, well, and Todd and his wife, Noel, started Two, River, or, yeah, Two Rivers Biz Starts, mm -hmm. which is an offshoot from the one in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and I go to all of his meetings, and some of the people who come in have brilliant ideas, mm -hmm. but they don't have the capital, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, what can we do to help them out? Yeah, making that connection is really important because I, obviously, uh, uh, you know, you can't go without any income. And right. You have, you have to live right. uh, while, you're, while you're starting this business. I, I, during the campaign, I, Lieutenant Governor Barnes and I had a chance to meet with some young entrepreneurs. And it was interesting. I asked them, so what, what is a major barrier that you have uh, as, a, as a startup? And, you know, pretty typical answers, except they kind of circled around the issue of health care. You know, they, they, they just couldn't afford any kind of health. And one, one person said, well, I set aside so much money uh, per month for, uh, for yoga. Uh, but okay, that's great, but did, what happens if it's something more complex than right. what yoga mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. fix? Right. And, and so, again, it goes back to connecting those, those dots. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I think it was, I don't know if it was before Thanksgiving or just before Christmas, but you did like a tour sure. of the different communities. Mm -hmm. You want to talk, tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a visual learner. And so when I started um, in this position on October 1st, it's been 90 days. Yes. Probationary <laughs> <laughs> um, period. So. Well, I, I wanted to, to, to jump in and understand the different projects that WEDC has worked on. So we found a sampling of them all around the state and so I traveled up north to Green Bay to Manitowoc I visited the Farm Discovery Center oh, okay. um, I went to Eau Claire and I got to tour my own little town <laughs> um, down to Prairie Deschaines so I've been I've covered a good bit of the state at this point there's so much more to see 
Um, but I'm able to see the differences for what's happening in urban areas and what's happening in rural areas and how we can replicate projects that, you know, something that's happening on the north side of Milwaukee, how can we replicate that in a small town in Wisconsin? Because we learn lessons about innovation and about disrupting the systems, the traditional ways of approaching businesses like you guys are doing in Two Rivers. And so I've had a real chance to, to see all these different projects and um, it's been really, it's been really educational. It's been, I, I feel okay. like the way I'm describing it these days, it's like I've gotten to travel around a small country and everybody, <laughs> everybody says, let me show you the really cool things that we're doing in our town. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think what, what you two exemplify sitting here is this community effort. And you know, you mentioned the sign and facade. So you're, what you're saying to those business people is we've got your back. We're going to help you. We're going to be here with you. And I think that's really important. So from my perspective at WEDC, what I'd love to see is how can, when those sparks are happening in the communities, how do we foster those? How do we fill the gap? I think that's the role of state government. So, uh, so going forward, I know we just got a couple of minutes left here. Um, what, uh, what kinds of things are on the plate for the coming year for 2020? I guess, what's, have there been any kind of hard metrics set for WEDC or sort of what are the, what are the, you see as sort of the big, what do they call it, the big hairy audacious goals uh, that are out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, what I've, what I've experienced is, has been learning for the last three months and really understanding, you know, what are the tools right. that, that I have at hand, we're this weird public-private quasi agency that I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm still learning that piece mm -hmm. of it, but mm -hmm. I don't have profit as a goal. I don't have, you know, when I worked at, at Organic Valley, pay price was a goal. So what is that metric? Jobs is an interesting one because we are in such a shortage of workforce. We have mm -hmm. such um, low unemployment that jobs might not be the problem that we need to solve for right now. So really understanding what is, what are we trying to solve for? And I think it's, um, you know, first and foremost, how do we help communities achieve the goals that they want to achieve? Mm -hmm. And how do we how do we fill that gap and work with that? And, and, and then how do you measure it? So mm -hmm. now that I've been on this learning journey, my next my next is the, the hard metrics or the, you know, maybe the, the soft, more, met, much more meaningful metrics than the hard numbers. So um, okay. that's my, yeah. my next task. Yeah. I got a goal, doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> I have a question though for you about um, will economic development dollars be returned to local governments? Are we going to be able to use some of the monies ourselves at our own discretion or is that something that's still going to be on state? Uh, that's, a great, that's a great question and, and it's been our goal from the beginning to make sure the regional entities are, you know, are we, we help them a lot okay. in, in order to continue to do that. But we do need to find ways to, as Missy just said, is that the decisions made locally are the, the ones we need to support. Okay. And uh, I think that's really important, and I think you'll see that going forward. Okay. We only have a couple of minutes, like Todd said. Um, I wanted to bring up the Marine Sanctuary. Oh, yes. And, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where exactly are we? with that at yes. this point. Yes, well, it was my pleasure to kind of reverse the, the trend uh, because it's an important piece that, the, you know, the, the coast on Lake Michigan folks uh, really want. And uh, and so we're, we're, the, uh, we're working with the uh, federal government and the Department of Natural Resources to come up with a final plan that will be submitted. And then I ha once that plan is, uh, I receive, I have 45 days to uh, say okay, and if Congress plays a role in that too, right. but I know the work is being done to to move it forward. Okay, because yeah. it had gotten so far in the process, right. mm -hmm. and did some of that work have to be redone? Not much of it, frankly. Just a little, and, just a yeah, and and so I I think we're I think we're in a good place. Let's okay. put it that way, and I'm looking forward to having that final uh, final look at it, and then I think our our congressional folks also get to take. Okay. Look at it too, and then after that, it goes on the registry. Yes. Is that what it's okay? Yeah, yeah. So it, it looks good. I, we're looking forward to a final plan coming back. Well, you expanded the the boundary, the northern boundary, up a, one more county. Right. Was it okay? But, but, and then we, I think we removed some from the southern end of it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. They didn't want to participate. But, right. Um, it, it's something that had widespread support, and obviously it was somewhat controversial with some folks, but uh, at the end of the day, it seemed to be uh, an appropriate uh, right. appropriate thing to 
to pursue, especially because of local governments and local local folks and living in Lynch are, are for it. Well, we're very excited about it, and I know that once it once it comes to fruition and it's a real thing, yeah. and then the next step for us is that where's the, where's the visitor center going to be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we we're, we've already got our thinking caps on. I bet you do. I bet you do. Keep keep going because I. It's moving forward. We just have to wait until the federal government and our DNR get a final. Absolutely. Product. Well, thank you very much for, right. for doing that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, so we hope uh, that uh, you know maybe at some point you'll agree to come back on the show and, uh, and, right. and talk to us a little further about things, or that maybe the next time you're passing through Two Rivers, yeah. you stop by, see the beach. I uh, make a ice cream and cones and, and I'll uh, buy you an ice cream. How's that? <laughs> That's great. That's great. The lieutenant governor really liked this cream and cones. Oh yeah, cones. I did. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. yes, he informed us. Yeah. <laughs> we have a really good picture of him eating an ice cream cone. Yes. He's savoring it. So. <laughs> well, thanks so much. You guys are doing great work. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, and we'll be right back. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we had a great time. We hope you did, too. Uh, we had a fantastic time. It was really great having that, that conversation. And, um, and of course, this was a special standalone episode, and we'll be posting it up uh, just probably a few days after, right. we, after we film this. So there won't be much, much of a delay here. Um, if, you, uh, if you haven't already, um, please uh, visit ExploreTwoRivers.com for all the latest news and information about events happening uh, in the city of Two Rivers. And um, if you want a little more information about us, Two Rivers Talks, there's a couple of ways you can follow and learn about us. On Facebook. On Facebook. Or you can go to tworiverstalks.com. And which reminds me, I have to update our website. All right. Okay. Which I will do that. here in the next <laughs> couple of days. So, but um, those are two different ways that you can follow us. Or you can follow us directly on YouTube, on YouTube. as well. And, and be sure to like and, uh, and share uh, that with us if you, if you enjoy uh, this show and you know, some of our others. We always try to suggest a few others that might be of interest to you. Right. Um, and then uh, if you do like what we do, you know, there's cost involved with what we do. And so um, we're, we have a, a, a Patreon uh, page. Uh, so if you can spare a dollar or two a month, uh, that certainly helps us defray the costs of putting together the episodes and doing them on a regular basis. Um, so you can become a sponsor of the show. You get a shout out and do some little right. special uh, things now and again. Now and again. Uh, so that's at patreon.com slash two rivers talks. Right. Check that out. Yeah, check it out because we've got some merch that is going to be specifically for patrons. Yep. And it's real, they're really cool. The lighter. Cool swag. <laughs> cool swag. <laughs> So I think that brings us to, an, to the end of another episode. Yeah. And uh, this was a big one, exciting one. Yeah. Um, more great stuff to come uh, in 2020, but what a great way to start the year. Absolutely. And uh, we hope you'll stay with us along that journey as well. And uh, wish you a great week. And we'll be seeing you soon out there on the streets, Two Rivers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.